looking to get even bigger gets the surprise of a lifetime when a fertility treatment proves successful on the very first try. But it was just the beginning of a journey of uncertainty and doubt that they are meeting head on together. CBS 410's Ashley Cullinane is live to share their story with you. Infertility is a painful reality more than 1 million women in the country face. Tonight, you're going to hear the love story of Heidi Taylor and Peter Rivera and how their love for each other and their children helps them overcome the tough hand life has dealt them. Heidi Taylor and Peter Rivera have an unconditional love. They're full of life. This is the makeup I want to do on you. And love tradition. We have a number. Um, our favorite number is three. So it was fitting. Peter joined forces with Heidi and her daughter Haley, making a perfect team of three. Haley and I were kind of a package deal, so his family kind of expanded immediately when we started to fall in love. On January 23rd, 2013, this trio got a little bigger with Caitlin's arrival. Peter was now outnumbered. Three years passed. I just wanted to have another child with him. They tried but couldn't conceive. They said it was going to be almost impossible for me to get pregnant on my own. That's when Heidi began an infertility treatment using pills that induced ovulation. They, they tell you that it's unexpected to become immediately pregnant and not to get too down or to get uh, to lose hope, I guess you could say. Um, so they considered us a lucky one when when we got pregnant on the first dose. She was so surprised she took more than 10 pregnancy tests. Even seeing a positive test, you still kind of get that feeling that it's a fluke. They soon learned they were in for a lot more. Heidi was pregnant with twins. I didn't believe it. <laughs> but even that wasn't the last surprise. Ended up that one of the sacks, the egg had split, making a fraternal twins and a, a paternal triplet. Mm -hmm. um, so he was, it was a pretty exciting but breathtaking breathtaking call because it was, it was kind of hard to believe until until I saw the ultrasound and heard the heartbeats. Triplets, three boys. They began planning. We started getting ready, I guess, three of each thing. Three cribs, three car seats, countless doctor visits. But on March 16th, the light at the end of their tunnel started going dim. Uh, we were eating and I went to the restroom and I told him that we had to go to emergency and ended up I was in labor at that point. I was 22 in six days. Heidi went in and out of consciousness for three weeks. Easter week is, I guess when you could say things went downhill. Our first son, Peter, was, was born on Good Friday, March 25th. Um, he was one of the twins. Peter Jeremiah was rushed to the neonatal intensive care unit. He died hours later. Peter didn't last, what, five minutes? Maybe 10. Within minutes, um, Elijah was born and declared stillbirth because they had clamped his cord, initially cutting off oxygen and food supply to him. Um, so he, he didn't even get a chance to see daylight. Isaac died the next day. The couple was left longing for the sound of three tiny heartbeats, only to find silence. It turned out Heidi had been suffering from sepsis, a complication from an infection that caused her body to shut down. I began to crash. My blood pressure dropped to an unsafe rate. I was panting for breath. I was trying to take every gasp of air I could to stay alive. Heidi went into a coma for nearly three months. It was heartbreaking for me at that time. I was, like I said, in disbelief. I thought I was in a dream. May 3rd, Peter and Caitlin were heading to the hospital to visit Heidi. When Caitlin started kicking and screaming and calling out her mom, she says, Daddy, Daddy, there's Mommy, there's Mommy. Caitlin was pointing at a rainbow, perhaps a symbol for what would happen an hour later. Heidi had awakened from this coma. For the first time in months, Heidi could hold her daughters, but her battle was far from over. Kidney failure and a series of infections kept her in the hospital. What we thought was going uphill and improving 
was actually the necrosis getting worse and turning into a wet gangrene that was actually eating the muscles and the nerves um, and causing me to slowly bleed out. She had 17 blood transfusions, but medicine couldn't save her body. Heidi lost her entire left hand, part of her right hand, and her legs were amputated from the knee down. It almost feels like a horror, for, a horror film. It's, it's a mind game every day. Heidi is now confined to a wheelchair. You can't, you can't dance with your little girls. <laughs> you lose all of your freedom. The family tells us they have good days and they have bad days. They count their blessings. If we can get through it and make the best of the worst that's happened in our lives, our story will help others overcome those challenges. Those challenges enormous, the grief unimaginable, all being fought by a love unconditional. Now we live for our boys to show that they didn't leave in vain for, because it's just as much their story as it are, is ours. If you want to believe in miracles, well, Heidi's my miracle. Heidi, absolutely a miracle. Wow. Yeah, I've been getting to know the Rivera's over the past couple of months and just, you know, even just seeing this story right now, it really puts things in perspective. But this family is in so much need. Heidi says that a lifetime of prosthetics would cost $3 million in even just for a year. Just for part of her hand, it would cost $15,000, something they, of course, can't afford right now. How are they going to get along or they'll just do it day by day? They are getting along day by day. They have their two girls by their yeah. side, going to their home several times over the last couple of months. You know, the, you just see the joy in their eyes, the little girl's eyes, and really commend Peter and Heidi for staying strength, so strong. Yeah, the strength in that family, incredible. Yeah, well done. Ashley, thank you.